Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I thought I would go ahead and start a series uh, for the new Ice Cream Fitness 2.0 of demonstrating based upon some of my fairly recent training footage. And yeah, my squat is, is down a little bit because I had an injury that I'm, I'm rebuilding my squat after not being able to squat for like a month. Uh, so this is a little bit lighter than you guys would be used to seeing me do. But it actually gives me some good material to discuss technique and form and just basically demonstrate these basic lists for the noobs who are going to do them. So if you guys watch what I'm doing here, you'll notice a couple of things. You'll notice I'm, I'm basically doing a high bar squat and you'll notice that I'm keeping my neck neutral, my scapula are pulled back tight, all right, scapula are pulled back tight at the start of each rep. So you'll notice when I walk under there, I get under the bar and I get it set in. Right, this is this is how you perform a basic high bar squat. You guys can do low bar on this program too. I don't really care whichever you're built for. Uh, I've done both on camera, but some things are going to be in common. And for a lot of you doing a squat similar to this, is is just a good generic squat. Uh, but again, I set the bar in tight up on top of my my shoulders. Right, it's up there on my traps, but it's not on the top of my traps. It's on the back of my traps. It's still above the delts. You pull your scapula together. Right. You pull your scapula together really tight. In fact, you want that super tight neutral neck. And you guys notice when I walk it out, what you'll notice when I get to this, this next set, uh, something, because I get under there and I get tight and you notice before I unrack it, I set my hips back just a little bit. So if you guys watch what happens, I do three steps. You do three steps to walk the weight back. Why? Because you don't want to bleed a lot of energy. Uh, and you'll see people walking it all the way out of racks and everything. And, and you got to question what they're doing with that. Because honestly, for most of you, unless you're really short, even if you're in a normal squat rack, it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, if you're doing high bar, at least. But you'll notice left foot, right foot, left foot, another little step. Three steps involved. You're set. Notice my toes are slightly out. Watch what I do before I descend each time. I take a deep breath. All right, that's important. You need to ratchet up tight before you descend on the squat you take a deep breath and you notice that i turn my knees out just a little bit before each rep why am i doing that so that i can get better depth and it helps you stay tighter and it helps uh, activate the glutes more so that knee out position is part of setting up your tightness on the barbell squat so I'm going to demonstrate again this next set. And I'm just going to talk through these. I just scrolled a bunch of my sets from the last few weeks up here. And I'm just going to have them just rolling through on repeat. And we're just going to look at what I do each time. Notice I get under the bar. All right. We pull in tight under the bar. Pull your scapula together tight. Notice I seat the bar into my, my back up there, up into my traps. I dig it in. You step it back. Neck neutral, deep breath. Notice I turn my knees out. I set my hips back just a hair. It's very subtle. But why am I doing that? Well, it's about getting tight. It is about getting tight. Because that is part of performing the barbell squat. You're trying to set everything in. You're getting your glutes tight. You're getting your hips set back. I am taking an enormous breath between each set. And then I am pressing my abs against that belt on every single rep. Because that's how we brace. You know, you get people who say silly stuff like, uh, the back is the weak link in a squat. No, only if you've created a situation in which your back is a weak link on a squat. If you build everything up gradually and you learn to squat correctly, you squat all the way to depth, to at least parallel, like I'm doing, which we'll discuss in a minute on that. Squat to parallel and you learn to brace correctly and you don't do partials and other silly stuff or one-legged exercises or leg presses, you're, everything's gonna develop together. Now, you notice that I keep my torso relatively upright. Now, it's almost impossible on a heavy squat to keep your torso perfectly upright. Don't let people convince you of that. But the general idea is that there's, there's a minimal acceptable amount of forward lean, but it's not a lot because you're bracing your core. And by bracing your core, it helps you stay more upright. It helps you stay more upright within uh, the limits of your ability. There's going to be a little bit of movement there, right? There's always going to be some. But when we start talking about your form breaking down, all right, that's an example. 
what I said in the first video on this, that when your form starts to break down, that's when you know you've hit failure. So if you're at a point to where you're seeing your torso just doubling over like a taco on your third or fourth rep, then what does that tell you? Because notice how upright mine's staying, right? Because I'm taking that deep breath, keeping the neck neutral. Not necessarily chest isn't necessarily up, but I'm not getting a large amount of forward lead. Notice it does get a little more pronounced the further you get, but that's a sign that your, your form is starting to degradate. That's what we're talking about when you're failing, your form is getting bad, that you're reaching your, your fatigue limits. All right, when you start folding over like a taco and you have to grind and your knees cave in, right? Your knees start caving in, that's when you know your form is broke down. But you want to actively drive those knees out. And that's one reason I turn them out before the start. I turn my knees out, I take that deep breath, and then you descend. And I don't really sit back per se, but I just push my hips back a little bit. Again, and then you drive up. This is a squat. This is a squat, guys. Now, as far as depth goes, what are we looking for? We're looking to just hit parallel. A lot of people would say, well, why parallel? Uh, because that's where we get the best ratio of range of motion versus weight on the bar as far as effective range of motion. When you start going much deeper than parallel, a couple of things happen. Uh, it starts reducing the amount of weight you can use dramatically, which wouldn't normally be a big deal for a full range of motion, but it does so because you have muscles that start to disengage more. And for a lot of people, you start getting a uh, posterior pelvic tilt where your pelvis starts rolling under. All right? You notice what we're trying to do here, for most people, you can develop a, an amount of mobility to where you can keep your pelvis from, from rolling under to parallel, but some people can't go deeper without it rolling under. And if you're trying to prevent lower back injuries, that's what you need to do. Now, when I say parallel, if you watch, you'll notice, and it's subtle, and it's partially the camera angle, and if you're not sure what you're doing, because I have filmed myself from the side to double check my, my angles, uh, you want your hips, the crease in your hips, to drop below the level of your knee. And that's parallel. As soon as it hits anywhere below it, that's a parallel squat. And that's what we're shooting for. We're not necessarily doing a full squat, right? We're not doing a full squat, we're just doing a parallel squat. For overall strength and size building, uh, that's a very, very good range of motion. Now, why don't we go higher? Why don't we stop short? Uh, because you're gonna get less quad development. Meaning, when people start talking about, you know, the quads not getting enough work on a squat, well, it's because they're not hitting parallel depth. And when you start finding when you reach parallel, instead of stopping at six inches short, your lower quads light up a lot more on an EMG right so we don't want to go too high even if it lets us use more weight because we're going to get less quad you might get more back involvement you might get a little more back development out of it maybe but we have other lists for that so we're trying to just go to parallel you're trying to stay relatively upright with the torso drive the knees out it's all about the bracing it's all about the tightness getting tight is everything and that's one reason we don't walk it way out it's really harder to to stay tight if you've bled a bunch of energy walking the weight way out and you shouldn't be shuffling you know again you notice it's a three-step walkout I put my left foot back then my right foot comes back and with that right foot on the first step what does it do on the very first step what does it do it goes all the way to my squat position where that if you watch the right foot where it goes that's where I squat from it stays there one movement. The left gets some extra adjustment to get everything set into place. That's what we want. That's all the depth that you need from the J-hooks. If you're hitting the J-hooks on the way back up after doing that, you use, again, the sign you've got excessive forward lean, right? You're not bracing tight enough. Your core is not strong enough. That's why we have ab work in here. That's why we have extra core work. That's why we build up gradually. That's why you do the weight reductions when your form breaks down, because you're trying to work with just enough workload and weight that you can keep everything properly managed. But your tightness, pulling those scapula back, turning your knees out, setting your hips, bracing your core tight. That's what we want. That's the tightness we're talking about. That's what will help keep your torso rigid. That's what will make this a, a more quad dominant exercise your quads, your hips, everything else. I mean, the squat puts muscle on most of your body. To be honest, if you did nothing but squats, at least 60% of the muscles in your body would hypertrophy from it. But we are keeping the quads 
and the glutes as our primary movers by doing it that way. So what you're looking at is form breakdown is gonna be if your knees start caving inward, or if you start folding over like a taco, that's form breakdown. That's what we count as time for the weight reset. When I talk about the weight resets due to either failing a rep or bad form, that's what we're talking about. You need to be working with just enough weight for your work sets that you can maintain knees out, torso relatively upright. That's the goal. And again, notice it's all about the tightness and you notice the bar stays midfoot. That's the other big cue for almost every exercise we're gonna do. The bar is supposed to stay midfoot on all these barbell lifts, on every single one of them. And that's gonna be, even the starting strength guys call that kind of their master cue, I believe. Uh, I agree with them on that. I think they're absolutely right, uh, irrespective of what the barbell exercise is. And that's because that's how you maintain a proper center of gravity, right? Let's just move the most weight possible using the most muscles possible with the lowest chance of injury. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.